hey what's up guys today in this video and in this series we are going to learn about graphql graphql is a query language that was initially developed by facebook right and it is a declarative language where the client has the responsibility of fetching or rather declaring what kind of data is expected and the server basically understands the requirement and gives out the data. Now, before we really jump into learning GraphQL, we need to understand why GraphQL was developed or what kind of problems GraphQL is solving. If we understand that, then it will make more sense for us to use it in that particular way. And also, you know, this information will be helpful. So if you would have typically worked with any API based development, the basic standard is an HTTP request, correct? It can be a GET request or it can be a POST request. Now, in any REST API, the idea is that the client makes a call. It can be on a URL, which as I said, it can be a GET or a POST. And in there, we may additionally send some parameters and the server does all the calculations, makes the decision and spit out a payload, which then the client consumes. So in this entire cycle, who is making the decision about what needs to be shown to the client? It is the server, right? But then if you think of it, the client needs to show the data. So why is the server making the decision? GraphQL comes into picture in these kind of situations. With GraphQL, it is the client who is making the decision what it needs from the backend in terms of you know, attributes which it needs to show on the front end. So the decision is made by the client and that is a big advantage over the typical REST APIs. It also helps solving some of the problems which we used to face with REST APIs, for example, overfetching or underfetching. What are these? Well, if I simplify it, overfetching means we are getting data which is more than what we are displaying on the front end. Just for an example, let's just say the back end is giving you an entire object of post, whereas you only wanted maybe the title and the featured image. Okay, so this means you are transferring more data than what was required for the front end. So, you know, there is more data transfer over the network, which in a way is affecting your performance. On the other hand, it is quite possible that you are underfetching some data. For example, again, um, let's just say that the post listing API which you had doesn't give you the count of the comments. So maybe you are making some kind of a hack and getting those information from some other API. So you are basically underfetching the information. But with GraphQL, because the dependency or the ownership of fetching the information, the decision is with the client, these kind of problems really get solved quite easily. One more advantage of GraphQL is that we don't need so many versions of APIs. Why? Because if you would have done any kind of mobile development or any, um, yeah, typically mobile app, right? You would have faced the problem where, let's just say that your mobile client is using an older API. You can see in your Play Store that there are quite a few users who are still using the older APIs and that means you still can't deprecate them and it is becoming a headache for you to maintain multiple API versions. Why? Because maybe there was one attribute which was not present in the older version and in the newer version you are adding it and maybe some behavior. But with GraphQL, these kind of problems get solved because, you know, the client is making the call. So if the client is making for an attribute call, it will get it. And that really doesn't make any difference for older versions, right? Because they will not be making that call. So yes, the API versioning becomes a bit easier. And last but not the least, very interesting piece is managing of endpoints. With GraphQL, you just have one endpoint. 
one endpoint is responsible for giving you any kind of data because we are making queries to that single endpoint and that is a good thing because now there is no more headache of managing so many api calls so many urls and keeping a trap of what an a particular api is doing because graphql can handle a lot of those stuff so with these you know major advantages of graphql i would say many frameworks many saas products and apis are now quite open to producing graphql apis right some of them have even gone ahead and you know recommended that this is the way of using their apis and they have plans to even discontinue their rest api in future for example i know it for a fact that shopify has a rest api which they have plans to maybe deprecate in the coming future because they strongly recommend interacting with the graphql api so as you can see graphql is a very important thing which is becoming kind of a standard now and hence it makes sense for us to understand learn and see what good we can do with it and start building some cool front end applications with graphql so let's get started